Hey everybody, wow, this audio is really great. Thanks for uh, having me. This is a great conference still so far. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about really, really old stuff. I'm Stitch. I uh, volunteer for uh, <coughs> an organization called Awesome Retro, which does uh, retro gaming uh, on events in the Netherlands, just for fun. And one of the projects spawned from Awesome Retro was a Twilight CD thing. And I'm going to tell all about it for as far as I, as far as I know it. So, dissecting a Where's CD-ROM compilation. Uh, well, Where's, I hope everyone understands. It's illegal software. A CD-ROM, I will explain, because it's old. <laughs> um, I'll take you back to 1996, where everything was different. There was no internet. And for $5,000 or whatever euros or guldens, you could get a high-end PC with 200 megahertz and 8 MB of RAM. Yes. And a big bulky display. Um, things back then, well, there was no, not really an internet. Some people were privileged with the internet and blessed and, well, when they were connected to the internet, they well, couldn't really found, find anything because, well, Google wasn't there yet, so. <laughs> so, we're, uh, back then, hard drives also had about, well, maybe one gigabyte, maybe 200 megabytes. So, the thing back then is to get CD, of, or to get software and to get uh, games, you had to buy CDs. And I brought lots of them. Uh, this is the entire compilation of Twilight. Uh, this is actually a DVD, it looks similar. This is a CD. It's a picture over there. It's not white in the middle, you can sort of see through it. It's silver on one side and has some pressings on the other side. Uh, and it can contain 700 megabytes of information. 700 megabytes was more than your hard drive back then. So, this is magic. Um, well, what else, what else can I talk about? What, what else can I say about the CD? It has some numbers for anti-piracy, which I'm going to dive into shortly. Um, and well, you can just buy them and physically put them in your, into your computer and, well, uh, run software. Um, piracy back then, today there's, well, very, uh, there are many easy ways to get your software online without going out of your house. Back then it was all offline, so today we have the Pirate Bay and uh, many, many others. Back then we had uh, Twilights and many, many others. So this is an overview of all the uh, Pirate CD compilations that have been released in the Netherlands. And if you, uh, many of the people here might have bought one or one or one of two, one or two of these. Um, I just, when I was preparing this talk, um, somebody from the anti counterfeit department or anti-fraud department in Belgium stepped up to my, uh, my table and said, well, every month a guy stepped into our office and brought this big crate of Twilight CDs just for us to have fun with them. So everyone had them. <laughs> um, and there are some, some are really bad, some are really good. Twilight is excellent. The standard is really, really, really high. And I'll show you in a minute. Um, just to give an impression, on Twilight Disk 1, this is the list of games. Click install or point your arrow, ar arrow in the DOS box or DOS window and install. And the application, same stuff, just enter, install, and it's ready to go. It's an amazing collection. It's just Hexen, Rayman, uh, Warcraft 2. Wow. And all that for just 20 guldens, or 10 euros, if you wish. 
<clears throat> so unbeatable. How I got into this madness of collecting all this physical junk is, um, well, on every disk there's a domain name mentioned. It's www.twilight-cd.com. It's on every ring and on every disk of every CD, every case. And uh, a few months ago, it was in uh, what, remediation, remediation period. So that means the domain is going to expire and the domain squatter is going to release it. And I bought it. <laughs> With the sole purpose of making a muse mu museum from it. Um, why? Well, for the fun and because I think it had, a, it had social influence on the Dutch society at least. Um, and also because the Twilight people, uh, well, had put a lot of effort into creating these discs um, and went, uh, put, just pushed it to the next level. And they deserve some credit somewhere that is everlasting, at least until my server goes down. And, um, well, I bought a domain and uh, sent a message to uh, a website, a shock block in the Netherlands, called Geenstel, and in the same night, my server did not go down. Oh, yes, it did. It was like, bam. I got 20 to 50 emails with, do you want stuff? Do you want stuff? Oh, this website, I've got the original, this is a, a sort of screenshot compilation from the original website. It was somewhere on the internet. I don't know, where, I don't know where anymore. Uh, somebody gave this website, this, this is how the internet looked back then. It has a menu and some pictures, wow. And I got even this website. This is another, well, beautiful site from 1990, I think 1999, uh, or this website. It's amazing what is still out there on the internet, but nobody links to these pages anymore, so it's totally forgotten. Nobody knows about this anymore, so that's, yeah, strange. So about the product. What is Twilight really? If you look at it, Twilight in itself is a beautifully designed product. Um, it costs a little bit, 25 gulden back then, uh, if you were on the uh, consumer end. Uh, you, got, you get a lot of games and applications. You get a disc one, once every month. Um, it looked genuine. It could be from a store. Only the difference was you got it from your colleagues or your friends at school. And, for example, you know that this guy in school was selling this stuff, this stuff, so you went up to him and said, hey, you got the Twilight, and said, yeah, walk with me. You go to his locker, and he opens his locker, and in it is this big piles of Twilights, and he says, that's 25. Yeah, and there you go. And that you, that, that's what you did every month. Some schools even had pallets of Twilights rolling in every month. Some offices had them rolling in every month because it was big, big business. Um, but it was professional also. If you look at uh, the quality and go really into the details, um, there's a lot of words on the screen. Ignore them. Um, if you look at the details, I'll get an earlier release. I think it's 1996, 1996. Um, Excuse me, I don't have a picture with me, but this is uh, 3D art. It's really beautifully designed, and all the discs have the original 3D art designed by the people themselves. Uh, even the, the disc itself has some nice pressings on it with uh, artwork in its, its style. Uh, the inlay is nice and, per nice and shiny. Um, it has really great instructions in how to operate this thing when you pop it in your drive. Um, it has a great installer and a great menu. Uh, it has screenshots of the games you want to install or maybe not. And sometimes you could even get some extras, such as a free poster with release 18. Or uh, there was a wallpaper pack on it with all the artwork from previous, previous releases. And 
well, yeah, some of them had just Windows 98 and 98 completely on them next to all the games and applications. Well, that's magic. So the quality is really high, and that deserves some respect. This is an example of some 3D art. They had their own spaceship modeled. I think it's in 3D Studio Max, and I don't know if this is stock, if this is a stock image or that it is uh, that they built it themselves just for the fun of it. This is a more close-up. You see this big space station, and back then 3D graphics were new. If you look at video clips from 1996, and you see 3D over there, you are going to cry. It's horrible. And this is. Well, for what it is, it's pretty beautiful. And they made it themselves, just because they wanted to make something really great. And another picture, then they used nice fonts. So it took a lot of effort or some effort to find what fonts they used. And well, I found out that it was Sensetica and it was Fat Freddy after a day or two browsing through fonts. And compared to others, I've got some other things with me. I've got Crazy Bytes and Storm with me. Um, just look at the difference in just holding the discs up. I hope you can see it. This is nice two colors. This is uh, Crazy Bytes. It looks like a porn CD. And this is Crazy Bytes 6. And it looks like, well, somebody that does not has, have really has, really has design skills made it. Um, and they are all written with viruses and other crap. So compared to others, well, Twilight is really excellent. Um, in numbers, if you have all of them, you can do some statistics. And I know you all love statistics. So here are some numbers. The series ran from 1996 to 2004. And two or three crews, I'm not sure yet, because some of them got busted and, well, had to sit somewhere in a closed area, so a closed, small area. Um, the CD releases were 75, 136 CDs, 41 DVDs, and in total, all of them together, different discs, is 180, and they ship up until 65,000 discs a month. So you try that not getting busted. That's an achievement. On the disk, there are two, over 2,000 applications, over 2,000 games, a lot of various stuff. Those are 3DFX patches, uh, cracks, trainers, uh, viruses, and other junk uh, you might be interesting. They had developed their own scripting language, and it has uh, 600,000 uh, lines of code effective lines of code. Um, they made 10,000 screenshots in those eight years. And it, all in all, in the lines of script, there were only 100 serials. So the rest was either cracked by themselves, mostly in the beginning, uh, or by um, uh, other teams such as Razor and, well, whatever. I don't know the names by heart. If you got one of these CDs and you placed them in your drive, then you got this, well, this blue thing, which was a menu. It's called, this is in DOSBox because it doesn't work anymore in, uh, in, uh, from, well, Windows 7 and, and whatnot. Uh, but this is the, their menu. You can just uh, move up and down with the arrows and say enter and it installs and you can change your drive. Um, you can even watch some screenshots in DOS. So that's pretty decent. Uh, as time goes by, they move to some other Delphi program. Uh, this is number 10, and it doesn't work at all in modern PCs. This is number 26. The concept remains the same. You can just uh, select your game or select your application, and you can install and play. So it's a nice archive. Because it was so popular, there was somebody called Orca, I don't know his uh, real name anymore. Um, this guy made his own menu. And the funny thing of this one is that you can compile your own 
Twilight from the things you like most. So you can select your own games and then you can create your own wares release with uh, menus and etc. That's pretty nice. Um, it also converts the Twilight format, the Twilight CD format, which is some binary thing, I don't know what it is, uh, to an Excel database or an uh, Access database. So statistics can be derived from this. And here's, the, here's uh, an example. I filtered on my favorite uh, software vendor, Adobe. And here you see all the different versions of Illustrator and GoLive and InDesign you can just install or make on one disk. So that's, for the time, this was the way. So that's the, that's the product. That's what you get when you spend these 20 guldens or 10 euros. Now let's look at the organization. A little bit. The organization is some started out as a group of friends in college, having fun, and they were just fed up with all the crappy software and wares releases uh, placed on the market. They wanted to do something better. And in the first and till release number 30, you see and you keep on seeing that. Um, they tell what they're doing and how, how they spend their time and what games they play, what demo scene conventions they visit. Um, and they say, well, we're fed up with whatever. So we're going to make the best, uh, well, the best wares completion there is. And it's a lot of fun. You see a lot of small things in the in the software that makes it make it makes it fun, such as they have implemented a drunk mode. So if you're really drunk, you can still use it. I'll show you. <laughs> um, and they have a really personal touch to it, and it makes it uh, really human. It's fun. Every release has its own sort of nickname. Uh, just, uh, just things that were going on inside their head and why, well, it's just fun. So it, it started out like a family, a small family, a group of friends, and over time, 1999, 1990, or 2000, um, it turned more into a sort of criminal empire. And that's because uh, in the period between 96 and 99, there was another gigantic um, organization also uh, on the illegal market on the or the music uh, illegal market so they pressed and released uh, music discs every month and they partially took over and they um, uh, work well work together I don't know really the, 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 the details of this but they changed from a happy crew and happy family to uh, somewhere more criminal empire ish so yeah, well, you'll see in the decay in the end. So, but for me, what's interest? What's in it for me? Why do I do this? Well, I like to take thing, take things apart. So I did take this apart as far as I could stretch it. Um, the menus. There's this. This is this menu thingy. You could you can decompile the menus you get and. Um, uh, well, rearrange everything and make uh, other me uh, methods if you know assembly or are more skilled than I am in reverse engineering. But with really well easy tools such as Resource Hacker and uh, the horrible Delphi XE3 user interface, you can well extend the program and see what's inside of it. Uh, in the, in the background, you see Resource Hacker with some. Um, uh, Icon, the, the fours and the bees, and that actually is the, the Twilight logo in some format, B BMP, I think. That was the first achievement, so I could that, uh, uh, open up the application and see what it, what it does. Um, I looked at the files, every file, about every file, and I could make a really detailed time timeline till the second of when the CD was finished and went to the presses. And you can even see that between when they switch to two disks instead of one disk, you can see that there's a half an hour difference in them. So that's insane. 
Um, the first 10 releases all have nice uh, dates and details, like all is set to 1 and all is set to 9. This, di this disappears as the level of quality goes down over time. So what, you, what can you do more with a CD? Well, it's a data disk. And the nice thing of a data disk is that you, could do, that you can dive deeper into them and do a sector view of everything. And mostly on sector 16 on a disk, you can see uh, what software was used to create the final image. Sometimes it was EasyCD Creator, also shipped on Twilight. Sometimes uh, it was set Twilight Crew, sometimes set the name of the pressing company, or just crazy words like Ernie or Twilight or company or some URLs. Ah, uh, well, that didn't make me, well, that's nice, but it didn't re really make me happy. So next, I want to dive into strings.exe. And it's, oh, here we go. Strings.exe is something you might all know, but I just recently learned that it's an amazing tool and you can uh, get everything that looks like a, a human readable word and extract it from a binary. So I got some copyright notices, I got the sort of semi header files from some applications. Um, uh, and, and I found out that, that it was made with Portland, uh, the Portland compiler. Um, some usernames appear here and there, so that's really, really, really sloppy. Um, and they even used, in the later releases, um, they used some obfuscation, blah, which, well, doesn't add anything if you do not change anything in your application, only obfuscate it and have 30 or, or 83 releases be prior to it with the same source code, only not obfuscated. So. That doesn't make sense at all. But one thing struck me, it's on release one, it's the drunk mode. So what is this? Let's look inside the drunk mode. Um, there's a nice tool called Ilda Pro, which can decompile your application and uh, do um, decomposition into functions, and uh, strangely named functions, but still you can uh, walk through them. And this is the drunk mode routine with their neighboring functions. If you dive more deeper into it, then you can see that there is a switch between enable the drunk mode and disable the drunk mode. If you dive even more deeper into it, you can see the assembly with some generated uh, comments. And we found out that it was actually um, one of the keystrokes that you use to install software. It is control enter. And if you use drunk mode, you, everything switches in your menu. Uh, if you press up, you go down. If you press light, left, you go right. And if you watch screenshot, there are screenshots, screenshots there upside down. So it's fun, all right? They did it for fun. It, well, it disappeared afterwards, and, and there were no other drink modes discovered till yet. So now we've seen what the toilet is, what the crew is, and now we're going to take it a step bigger. Twilight is starting to become huge, and um, there's something with piracy, and, they, and people try to hunt them down and stop them. So I'm going to dive a little bit into CDs. Um, every CD has an uh, SID code and, and, or, and IFPI code. Um, these are the details that you see in the mastering of the, of, the, of, of the disk, really in the center. And you see the difference between an original authentic CD is on the left, there's nice uh, letters and the Pirated disks often have obliterated SID codes or no SID codes. Here you see an obliterated SID code, um, but uh, this is not really a solution if you are a pirate. If you are a really good pirate and have some money, then you just not have these codes on your disk because these codes mean trouble. These codes tell where your glass master has been made or where your mold has been made or your, um, yeah, your glass master or mold have been made. So you can trace back 
uh, where uh, your organization has been. So if you keep using the same power, same plant, and keep using this SID code, you're about to be, you will get busted. An example of this, from twilight number 80, a different crew appeared and they did things differently. We're in the DVD era. Wow, DVDs. Um, the DVDs uh, contained um, uh, a scratched out, well, IFPI code. Only there's one problem with this IFPI code. The criminals forgot that CD-ROMs are actually holograms. So if you light them differently, you can, <laughs> you can see where the disk was made. And it didn't took very long until they, well, finally got busted, and finally the news outlets started reporting that the group was busted. So, shame on them. But piracy is not only from the sides of the authorities. Piracy also com comes from uh, riv rival groups or gangs that also want to uh, have a, get a slice of the pie. So, here we have release 25, which is a uh, strange thingy. Unfortunately, I lost my paper sleeve on this one. Uh, but I've got here release 25, and this is also release 25. It looks similar, even from your distance. <laughs> if you look uh, more closely, both are disk one. There's nothing really strange about it. And if you look at the back wall, the, the, they look similar. Only one of them is completely broken, and it's horrible. It's this toilet with this menu that differs. One disk has games, one disk has, disk has application. You cannot go back in time to see what Twilight contained what. And um, the funny thing is, on disk two of this ripoff, they also press their recycle bin. So if you like digging into trash, just pop this two in your drive and remove all the things from the recycle bin to your desktop, rename it, change it to the order they, uh, the, 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 the files suppo are supposed to be, and ta-da, you got a different menu from a different release, including an email address. That's fun. So those people really screwed up. But how do you combat piracy if you are a pirate? Well, there are two solutions. The first one is uh, find the pirates, visit them, and tell that you, they should not make any Twilight ripoffs anymore. This might have happened. But the better solution is, and I will search for disk 26. <laughs> yes. Is to add a hologram to your product just to make it better. And it says, seal of quality, buy quality, buy original. <laughs> And it's a better solution than violence. So make your product better, and uh, the other will disappear. I haven't seen any other bootleg release since. What you frequently see uh, are these homemade disks. For example, this one with the m nice pink uh, sticker label and the green backside. Oh yeah, original CDs were silver. These are green, those are, you can make them in your own home. So, looking at the timeline, you went from Epic, a scene, a community, people that want to make great products, to something that is just a wrap, a shrink wrap to make money of, from, and a name, a brand, nothing else. Uh, if you look over time, you see that it goes from an art with 650 megabytes on each disk, to 17 gigabytes of total crap in the end with viruses and whatnot. 
So in the, in, in, in the beginning, they, they, they cracked their own software, they, they wrote nice demos, they included uh, results from, from demo parties, uh, they had nice details and uh, helpful instructions. And from disk number 30, they're basically all the same, only the content, the games change it. So it's not really that special anymore. There's no community feeling anymore. It's just a, com a, a commercial wrapper, uh, uh, something that people recognize and buy. Um, and that, that saddened me. What saddened me more is that it was, um, there are stories of violence and um, some escalations, um, and that's understandable if you are this big and you are this uh, criminal empire, or you have this criminal empire to run, but it isn't fun. So that's a, uh, um, yeah, that's a downside. Uh, somebody asked before, what is an enforced USB? And an, uh, an enforced unique selling point is that if you see anyone else copying your product, you visit them, you, you, hit, you smash them up and say, well, you're going to call this number in the morning, and then you get this phone call and the, and the guy on the phone says, well, you're going to pay the guys who beat you up last night and you will not ever do this again. So that's... Uh, that's their unique selling point. That's, that's not fun. So, if you look at the timeline a little more detailed, the green stuff is the new stuff and it's the nice stuff. The blue stuff is more special and the red stuff are the things that disappear. So in 99 you see a downfall that the hologram disappears that they just added. Uh, the working title disappeared, so the community sense also disappeared, the stories disappear. Um, some other title, the number title, uh, I forgot, the number on the CD disappears, so every disc looks, it has number 53, but every disc look, looks the same, so it's easier to manufacture. Uh, the notes disappear, uh, what did happen is that uh, in 98, well, that still the good time, there was a uh, a nice gift, this was this poster and some other gift. I don't know what it is still, I'm looking for it. If somebody has it, I don't know. Um, if you still have it, you're crazy. Why do you keep this stuff? Um, in 2003, uh, something really weird happened. Um, I think in 2002, the original crew stopped or something like that. And then in 2003, in April, three volumes appear in the same month. And then um, they have all this obfuscation and uh, folder structures on their disk to make it harder to copy their product. Well, and in 2004, after one release, it's gone. It's over. Online, there are still releases, and, and they are released till whatever, 123, but they're not really worthwhile, I think. They do not have the artwork, they do not have the, the same feeling, and they're not physical, so you cannot stockpile them. So it's an end of an era. Um, so in eight years of work, they did not, they, on all these disks, they had no real screw-ups. There is a username somewhere, there are some other details somewhere, and the, there might be a way to track the original creators by, uh, checking the visitors of some demo party they had the products of and their usernames and match them, but it's a lot of work and it doesn't really make sense. It's that, that would be insane to do this. Um, they were really ambitious and because they were so great and the product was so good, it turned against them and, well, I don't think anyone, I, I don't know if they left happily or not, but, uh, uh, well, the product Grew, uh, evolved beyond the or original expectations just because it was this great. So I think it's the largest and lo uh, longest running, longest running wars completion in the Netherlands, maybe the world. Um, and I think it's a genuine achievement what they made. Um, so that's for the twilight. Now the aftermath. After number nine, 89, there were some uh, bootleg releases and some online releases and remember the nice 3D art of spaceships and everything. This is what happened. This is number 95. 
It's beautiful. I want this product. And it has a .tk domain. And I'm a proud user of .tk domain since uh, har. But I just switched to .ml. And afterwards, you, you always all also saw the arrests. Um, finally, in 2007, one of the important guys uh, uh, went to jail or maybe already well, was released because he sat in pre-arrest or something. Uh, and here you see some estimations of what these guys well made or had as a turnover. And it was not only Twilight, but it was also Crazy Bite and Movie Box and uh, Veronica and some other brands that are that are created after 2000. Um, the wins is in the, the profit is in Gulders, and the Crazy Bites were really profitable, as you can see. The Twilights were not. Um, I think the authorities were not able to do a real estimation because. Uh, they are re they, they were really focused on I think crazy bites and MTV that time and maybe neglected Twilight or Twilight just started to suck and nobody bought it anymore I don't know really so after all this these years of work what happened well some positive things um, I think if you sell 60,000 copies of your software every month and many, many more copies are made, you, uh, a lot of people get their hands on software they would, not, they would not and could not get any other way. And that's a nice thing because back then the open source and whatever, well, it existed, but it was also hard to distribute. Um, there's a lot of creative software on this also. And there are a lot of creative professionals that started from the stuff they got from Twilight just because they could, their hand, could get their hands on it and use it. That's fun. And maybe you're sitting in this room. I know I am. Um, and that's just something that's, that everybody neglects and something uh, that, uh, well, that is not really quantifiable. Because, well, nobody exactly knows the statistics. Because maybe, I don't know what could happen if the real facts go out in the world before 20 years. Um, so there, there, there was a positive impact on society. And they made nice 3D artwork to look at, if you want. Um, the state of the project, to disassemble all the Twilights, to gather them all, to hear stories, to tell them, to republish them, to get them online. Well, there are some things to do. Um, I, I did not update the to-do list uh, just before this presentation, so let me do the check. 16-bit apps, yes, I did screenshot, disassemble, no. Uh, there are some still some disks, disks missing, so I could not do complete analysis on them. Uh, there are also lots of stories from people that had Twilight in their office or at home or new friends that were high up the tree and would load up their truck or trunk with Twilights or whatnot. Um, I like to hear those stories and I like to uh, publish them anonymously if you wish, just because it's an, 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 a nice thing to talk about. Um, and there are some uh, rare articles that have, are slowly disappearing. Um, and just republish them. One of the nicer article to, articles is by Peter Buwalda, and he tells about the uh, Utrecht campus and the wars and the criminal shit and whatever is going over there, was, was going on over there. So that concludes my short story on the physical and old school 1996 to 2004 Twilight Wars compilation CD. If you want to take a look there um, outside the tent um, in a moment, if you want to chat, uh, you're welcome. This is my info. Um, you can check our website, awesomeretro.com or twilight-cd.com for the entire archive and with all listings and you can search on it so you can see what Twilight, Twilight could contain this three specific 3D FX patch for Quake that you're missing and that's nowhere out there on the internet. You can find it like this. Um. Hi, uh, first of all, thank you. This was great. 
And um, it's not really a question, but more like we know that copyright in Europe now lasts, well, let's put it in practical terms forever. And uh, there are people like you and some other people driving with trunks full of those, you know, yeah. <laughs> just mentioning bad things might be happening. <laughs> so, there's, a, a, there's a nice statement that is old wares is no wares. I like that. Um, nobody really cares about this old Carmageddon patch, that, uh, old Carmageddon version that, version that works on nothing anymore, um, or this old Photoshop version that works on nothing anymore. So, but it's still a problem. I cannot place ISOs online. Luckily, just before this conference, somebody uploaded to some news group outlet all 123 ISOs. <laughs> <laughs> on your favorite news uh, group provider you can find them um, and I got a sh shitload of email because of that because they refer, refer to the site also uh, it's really nice you can try over there are you only interested in the Twilight CDs or do you have any interest in Onyx and the others? Um, no, there are so many. Uh, there are still some series running digitally. I think it's Help Desk and uh, MP3, and something, an Angel maybe still. Um, those newer, all the virtual releases, uh, I don't know about their quality. I think they're really small. Um, the, other, the other really older stuff, it's nice to have, but it it already took a lot of effort to just get this information, so uh, it's nice to have. Maybe I will dive into Crazy Byte because it's also big. Um, uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will contact you because I have a few uh, copies of uh, Onyx DVDs. Excellent. Thank okay. you very much. All right. See you around at the campsite. Goodbye.